start with. Oh, by the way, both of these, this is a team kill. These are both reps by Illusion Gaming right here. Oh, so okay. I think these are the only two Illusion reps in the bracket, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So this is a big moment for the Illusion crew, getting it right out of the way, <laughs> though, I guess. Yeah. No tension here. All righty. Um, if I heard right, I think they're starting on Temple Grounds. Okay, sure. Which, just speaking a little bit before the match, if I had to predict, um, Temple Grounds is weird in the sense that when the pillars are up, it's very different than when the pillars are down. Mm -hmm. It acts a lot more like, oh, obviously it acts a lot more like a pillar stage when the pillars are up, like DNA Lab, you know. Um, when the pillars are down, though, it kind of becomes its own big thing. Yeah. Um, I think, strictly speaking, like from, from just character and arm analysis, like Twin has the advantage when the pillars are up. But Maleev has usually been rocking the Tri-Blast and Funchuck recently, which are going to demolish those pillars very quickly. Yes. So I think as long as Twin can keep those pillars up, he's going to have a good advantage, having being able to duck and weave with Lola behind pillars, you know, fire dragons and bifflers from weird angles. But the second Maleev gets the upper hand and gets him against the wall, he's a little screwed. Mm -hmm. Like, just to put it lightly, he's running Dragon. Well, potentially, I actually don't know what set he's running. Looks like we're ready to start, though. Yeah, you hear the guitar riffs in the background. That means we are ready to get it started. The characters locked, loaded. Let's go ahead and see what we're going to start off with this loadout. All right, I'm Twin switching 5 in real soon. Oh. Yep. He's going to be running. Okay, he's got the a, a, a little difference of his Dragon set right now. Going to run a Hydra, and it looks like a Toaster on instead of the Biffler. Makes sense, though. He's fighting a Heavy Main, known yeah. Heavy Main. Mm -hmm. Give us a quick second, guys. Looks like the uh, HDMI signal is not quite working yet. So they're just going to be warming up. Uh, get, do a button check. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the HDMI cables might be off or something, so we'll go ahead and double check yeah. that for you guys, and we'll get that match soon real quick. How is Twin still fitting his headphones under his hat? Oh my gosh, I never see him take that off. Like, I hung out with him all day yesterday. Every time that we're at a tournament, we hang out. I've never seen him without that thing absorbing his sweat. <laughs> that thing's got to smell awful. Mm -hmm. I hope he washes it. Jeez. I saw a, um, I worked at Target over the summers, and I saw a guy wearing that same hat. And I almost called him Twin for, like, five solid minutes. Like, Twin, what are you doing here in my <laughs> workplace? Oh, wait, you're like a 35-year-old dude. What the heck? <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, checking oh my god, he took it off. Oh my god, rare twin 50 forehead reveal. <laughs> it's like the it's like Sonic Box when he takes off his hat for the longest time. Now he has a whole fursuit, so the, the story is kind of different, but we'll okay. see. All right, we got Hanukkah, we got twin. The, we if got you're the gonna put it on, it. put it on better, please. Don't just flop that thing on like a limp sock. All righty, and of course, uh, Malif hailing from uh, Canada, I believe. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't remember what part. I don't know. I think I, I think I that's, don't know. that's either a city or a province. I'm not sure. I don't know anything about Canada. Yeah, I, I know they have good maple syrup, and they have Superior and uh, Jam Canada there. They have Jimbo. That's free Jimbo. <laughs> Anyone remember Jimbo? Uh, twin hailing from Arizona. Please put that on, Twin. Please. I'm so worried that it's going to fall off and blind you in the middle of a match. Alrighty, and of course, uh, Twin Five O. I believe he's from Arizona. Yeah, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the few representatives from that uh, side of the uh, side of the country. We have uh, SoCal arms, but I think more in inland, like going yeah, past SoCal. Uh, yeah. Not too many in, in that area. It's mostly yeah. Midwest SoCal and a couple of New York. Yeah. As far as I know, Canada. As far as I know, Twin is the only Arizona player. At least that's active. Yeah. That I know of. Alrighty, here we go. We gotta go ahead and get things started here. All right, real match hours. Who up, boys? Alrighty, yep, like you said, starting on Temple Grounds. So let's go and get All this right. thing started. Okay, interesting. Maleev is actually choosing not to run the Tri Blast right now. She's going to be running a Popper instead, which is good at catching Lola Super Dash. It's mm -hmm. very good at catching that. The All thing right. that's going to lose out against Twin is that it's not going to have the horizontal coverage. Mm -hmm. It does get a little bit in vertical coverage, luckily, but it doesn't have the exact same, like, catch all shape. Yeah, and already we see Maleev taking out two of the pillars. Already, it got the grab. Go ahead and see what she can do to push the advantage position here. All right, trying to advance Twin, but she has to go behind one of the pillars in order to do it, and that gives Twin just a second to escape. Playing very well around Mechanica's narrowish grab right there. Mechanica kind of pencils in right there at the edge of her grab, and she is just avoiding all of it. Twin gets the rush, gonna get the juggle, gonna be 360 damage, very good. Mm -hmm. And of course, with those types of rushes, especially you wanna start off with uh, the Hydra to pop them up in the air, and then you can follow up with the Ice Dragon. You start with the Ice Dragon, it's a little bit too slow on the startup. Oh, here we go. Speaking Another rush comes in. Yeah, I believe gets the win, Yabuki, right there. Gets 335, misses the 20 damage juggle, but that's all right. Doesn't really do much other than the 20 damage anyways. I think this is the last pillar on the playing field, and now it's disappeared. Twin trying to cling onto it for dear life, but not able to. Maleev advancing, but Twin counter advances with Hydra. Yeah, trying to go on the aggressive, does not get that grab in, but still trying to push through. Let's see what the ice chain is going to be. Throws oh, another the rush. ice dragon, follows it up with the rush, and Twin Philo is going to take round one Ooh. in there. 
I don't know if that was a necessary rush, but it sure was a cool one at the very least. Yeah, I think for right now at least, it looks like they're trying to just seal the game, just just get it over with, make sure that they have at least that buffer. That way, in round two and three, that may be a different game. Ooh, all right, all right Japan's favorite, the double tentacle. Let's see what she's going to be able to do with this. This is the neutral dominator right here. Twin gets hit out of the air. He will be able to set up if he can retreat, but it's if he can retreat from this mechanical monster. All right. Not charged, so he's not going to get the knockdown. Oh, okay, yeah, he's going to avoid in. that. Might shield break, though. Oh, gets hit by the five. I, I think he thought it was done and was ready to shield parry forward. Gets the arm break. Believe only going to get the 20 damage juggle. Twin sitting on a rush right now. Yeah. He's going to choose to just retreat, though. Very smart play. Make sure that uh, Malieve doesn't have anything to counteract him and hit him out of the rush. Yeah, very interesting using the double Slamamander. I feel like the, the, the Mander is definitely a type of arm that's very underutilized in this current meta. Not too many people using them. Okay, going to get sniped out by the Ice Dragon before she can maneuver. Ooh, the, th the thing about the Manders is oftentimes when they are used, they're paired with something else like a glove or something. Because, you know, they have the glove has the straightforward shot. And the, uh, oh, the Manders, they, that's one of the reasons why they only go to the side. And the double rush is a little stinky. Yeah. You try to fire that off, and they just kind of go their own direction, as we see right there, giving Twin another solid health lead. About halfway to his rush, going to get it in a little bit. Gets a lot of chip damage right now on Maleev. And there's the draw knockdown and the rush he needed. All right, decides to do, throw out the bounce. Oh, yeah, gonna this is going to be it. Breaks up the grab. One more grab, though. Maleev's not ready for it. Going to get another round. There we go. Going up 1-0 yeah. in the set. Yeah. Now, of course, only... Top three is going to be best of five, so that's a big lead for 2-5-0 here coming into this set. Yeah, it kind of sucks that Maliev had to get frozen at that exact moment because that's kind of a... Uh, when you're sitting against Alola with a height advantage and rush, you're kind of screwed. That's kind of just the end of the game right there. Yeah. Because there's... I think every option basically is covered. There's a tag that's like on the screen. Uh, speaking of TSM Zero, <laughs> y'all like TSM Zero? I'm wondering if you guys like Zero. Okay, we're moving on to jokes here. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Going to go into Buster Beach. Let's see if there's any changes by either player. I imagine Twin's sticking with the same thing. It's Twin set. Yeah, it worked out for the first time, so we'll see. Believe. Yeah, there's that tri-blast that I was talking about earlier. Going to mm -hmm. be getting yeah. the side-to-side -side movement. Plus, if, Mali or if um, Twin does not space it correctly, uh, if he tries to do his air bounce, he could get hit by the uh, initial hit of the tri-blast and then the explosion as well. Mm -hmm. So it's very possible that one hit, even against the shield, could totally knock him down. Like right Ooh, there. Yeah, knock down. The ice is going to wear off, but it will get a second one. Not charged up. Oh, good evasion. the grab, too. Yeah, very good. Into the hot pocket, though. This is a bad space for any character. Lola has kind of a hard time getting out, too, because all she really has are super dashes. Maliev going to capitalize on the lack of mobility available to Twin and get that rush right there. Alrighty, yeah, every single time just uh, tries to pull up shield to be able to do the super dash, but Maleev is already ready with a counter advantage, and wow, Maleev starting off strong here in round two, taking the first game here. I think, I think Twin sees an issue right now of he has to super dash, and I think he's recognizing that by switching to glove here, he'll be able to play a little bit more straight boxing, or he won't have to super dash to get out of the way of things. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if he's going to rely on old habits from that set, or if he's actually going to be able to adapt to what he's bringing to the table now. Yes. Alrighty, let's see. Okay. Oh, here we go. That's going to be the rush. rush. Cancelled! Yeah. Funchuck of all things is going to cancel that rush out. Just comes in from the side, and Maliev is going to respond with a rush of her own. Starts with the Tri-Blast. Gets 305 damage. Yeah, this is a very, very strong response for Maliev coming into game two. Looking very much like she's going to try and take this to a game three, but Twin 5 has got to keep his cool. Got to try and get some aggression going. He's been trying to run away from Mechanica this whole time, but Mechanica's pushing the aggression in a place where she can uh, push very well. So let's we'll see Ooh. how he gets out. Oh, barely right outside the range of the 1-2. Yeah, forced to back up right there just because Mechanica had more mobility options available to her. And Mechanica's burst options, very similar to Lola's in some ways, as we see Maliev right there gets the uh, game. Yeah, going, going in for the hug, slap him around, and then put him on the ground. There we go, going up 1-1 one, one in this set. Good counter pick from Maliev, I guess I would say. She seemed to know every little bit of that geometry, and even when Twin had his uh, aggressive options available to him, yes. she just found her way to like work around that bumper. And it, it took a couple of neutral exchanges to get there, but she eventually did get there. And when she was at that point, she had so much mobility available to her. And the, I think the big difference, like I know I mentioned Mechanica, Lola Pop, very similar burst options, but Mechanicas are a little more sustained, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like they, they're slower to start up but they have less lag on them because they're constant like that, and you can right. cancel them at any time. Whereas Lola's, once you're in there, you're in there. All right, looks like no changes by other player. DNA Lab, like I said, a good stage for Dragon users, and Twin is going to be bringing that Ice Dragon and Hydra back out. 
Believe yeah. going to be starting with what worked for her last time. Yeah, on Temple Grounds, it looks like the, the pillars there are a little bit more spread out. You got three more clustered on either side of the Temple Grounds. This one is a little bit more consistent, a little bit more symmetrical where the platforms are going to, or excuse me, the pillars are. So that's going to be interesting to see how they use their burst options, like you said, to move maneuver around these different pillars. Like right there, going to be trying to super dash out, but Maliv is ready for it with the counter immediately. Yeah, the other difference with the pillars, though, is they t the ones on DNA actually take one less hit than the ones on Temple Grounds. Mm -hmm. Temple Grounds take four to break, DNA take three. And it looks like half of them are already gone. Another one about to fall. Maliv knows that she needs to get these out of the way. And Twin is now in the corner. Goes for a grab. But Maliv gets the rush off. Not going to land, though. Twin just out of the way. Alrighty. Yeah, Maliv with a relatively strong start. Let's see if Twin can oh, try to find Oh, he something. tried. He almost got that. It went for the Poppy Jr. grab. If he just made that a little wider, he would have landed. It gets the head of the dragon. Maliv drops her shield. And he gets the juggle, 365 plus the 20. Great play. Sorry, with the dragon head of all things. Man, Twin is really trying to just finish off the game. He's getting really antsy with his aggression, not waiting for Maliv to make a response first. And that's costing him a Ooh. lot of great positions. But the rush uh -oh. is available. Uh-oh. That might break. That honestly might break. That rush is dangerous. He was in a good position, though. If he was up against the wall, he would have been done so fun -zo. But now he has one last chance to make one last hit. I'm not sure if this will break through. A rush would be able to break through, but Maliv is able to shield it. Yeah, we're both on Magic Pixel for both of these players here. The oh, that's right! Oh, just yeah! Moves in immediately with the fun chuck. Malif gonna take round one in this game three. That's crucial for Malif. God, Twin is playing so much more aggressive though. Like you know, someone's playing aggressive if they hit with the head of the dragon and get that punch effect. That is ball to the wall aggression from Twin. He is trying to get back to this one pillar though. It's gonna, I think, it has one hit left on it, and he falls out from behind it anyways. Tries to retreat behind it. That rush is gonna pierce, but Twin was available to shield. Gets both of his arms broken though. No hit down, and Maliv gets the grab off of that. That's devastating damage for Twin that he could have avoided. All right, trying to burst in. Yeah, I yeah, that's like, the rush. I feel yes. Like, okay, there we go. Yeah, I feel like Twin is just not finding his aggression. He's saving himself with those rushes, but in the neutral, it feels like he's not getting those pokes in as much as Maliv is. Right, he's definitely trying to keep her at a distance, right? Which is what yeah. he wants as a dragon user. But it's just so like straightforward. There's literally a channel in the middle that you can just come up from for free. <coughs> All right, it gets that grab. Trying to keep this close here. Maliv about to get rushed though. Ooh. Gotta be careful. The knockdown with the fire though. Oh, that dragon almost hit. If Maliv made even the slightest error, now Rush, I think, would kill if she lands it. Twin is going to have to play to his shield. Oh, he, oh no, that's going to kill. Clemson, no, wait. Enough? wait. No, he, doesn't no, get he the fell out of, it. Yeah, doesn't get the full out of it. Yeah, Tri-Blast. He oh, is but another rush. knockdown with Don't the Tri-Blast, though. Don't be Wake up. Twin just needs one more hit now. Gets the freeze. That's good for him. Maliv just decides to stay in shield. Dude, that grab was from so far away. I'm surprised Maliv didn't react to it. I know she had all the time. I wonder what she was thinking, like, if he just grabbed parries and I lose anyways, and, like, he gets the rush off. I don't know what she was thinking. Yeah. Oh, man, they just skip and they're just mashing in in the final round. I think both the adrenalines for both of them is pumping. Let me see. Has Twins draw dropped yet? That is the true sign. <laughs> we had a player cam I'd be able to see. I think his tongue is still in his mouth, but we'll see in a little bit. Yeah, but that's a big rush. 360 damage. Gonna start off this match very strong, but Malif's gonna get a rush very soon too. Ooh, Malif tries to go for the grab right there. Smart play, not very risky, but at the same time, not gonna pay off very well. Her rush is in tow. She's advancing here onto it. He's doing his best to stay out of the way. Tries to clip the Hydra to the side, not gonna land, and Malif gets 270 on the rush. Good amount of damage for her. All right, relatively even game right now. Ooh, a lot Ooh, of chip big damage. knockdown. Let's see what Malif does with it. Ooh, gonna get hit by the Chilla. Or, I'm sorry, the Ice Dragon. Now you got me doing it. Dang it. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Oh, oh, tries to go for the Ice Chain. Does land one more. Will he get a third? Oh, Ooh, no three. Down in the air, though. Man, this is Ooh. completely even game. Both of these two. Okay, Twin 5 0 has his rush. Maliv has it, too. Let's see what the play oh, is going to be. Knocked, knocked down, down by the Hydra, though. Just a little too quick for that. The rush had not quite deployed, and Twin is going to take an advantage. Not a dominating one, though. He's still got to be careful. Maliv needs to advance, but she's too scared. Yeah, Twin 5 0 is keeping up assistance, playing defensively. One of the best uh, things that Twin is able to do. Starting aggression, a little <laughs> bit more difficult for him. But Maliv having a hard time trying to get through this wall. Just has to be oh, really she's, careful. Oh, no, she's farming Rush. She's farming Rush right now. Yeah. She's, she's not trying to advance. She's trying to let Twin not advance. Oh, there we go. That's going to be Maliv's Rush, and that's bad for Twin. Her Rush farm paid off. Oh, he gets the chip, but it's not going to do enough. It's not going to break his arm, though. He needs to just time her out right now. Timer. Get oh, the trip okay. damage. There we go. The 40 was enough to do it in. Good Rush farming, though, by Maliv. Very oh, impressive. Man. Yeah, very, very clutch game coming from Twin 5-0. Went down to the wire already. Looking like, oh, yeah, and then the hugs come in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was.
pretty crazy start to our top six so far. Yeah, I know, like, the amount of the strategies, they both changed up constantly. I think Twin, overall, he had a little bit of a harder time adapting, but because he got that first stage win and he got the counter pick on game three, like, that really gave it to him. Yeah. Just, and also just, like, a couple little things here and there, like Maliv's rush is getting canceled. Yeah. Um, good stuff, though, by both players. Maliv definitely made the right choice switching out her arms and yeah. some strategies halfway through. There's no sign of bad play from either of them. They play their hearts out on that yeah. side. Yeah. Oh, definitely. 100%. This was, this was the heart of battle. Haha. <laughs> you are, like... <laughs> You're like five months off. <laughs> uh, I know, but like, hold on, we gotta pose for the camera. No, you just gotta act candid and you gotta get those candid shots. So we're just gonna keep talking to each other like this while he gets you the, know, Do the you know how hard I have to work to look beautiful in the morning, Sedge? Uh, do you think this kawaii destune face comes naturally? Do you think the Japanese like listening to me talk? We gotta move on before <laughs> I get kicked out of this. Moving on into the next oh my part gosh. of the bracket here. We're gonna be on the other side of losers, and we got, right, who we got? Dart Remix, who is also one of our Mario Tennis heroes uh, for today. And he's gonna be playing against Para, who is one of our invited players uh, for the event today. Yeah, so, yeah. so. Para has not uh, been out to a tournament in a while. Yeah, I think the last offline he was at for ARMS was um, Smash and Splash 4, I think. Not this year's one, but the one yeah, last the year. Four. Yeah, the yeah. 4. Mm -hmm. um, he's done a couple online since then. It, when uh, when 2GG was doing Iron Fist Fridays, he played in at least one of them. Yeah. I think he won or got second in that one. It was I him or Pineapple. Got, I believe he got second. And yeah. No, I think he won, and then Pineapple got second, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was him or Pineapple. I don't mm -hmm. quite remember off the top of my head. Yeah, um, and uh, of course, Para, uh, one of the first people to ever take a set off of Pega. I think that's oh, yeah. uh, something to uh, take note as well. Someone from NA taking a set off of Pega too. One yeah. of the one of the people that could stand up to the Japanese when they were reigning supreme over in the NA. Yeah, luckily now we do have a the Japanese scene has kind of separated off and mm -hmm. kind of because we lost kind of Ku and Chateau from Detonator or not sorry Ku and Pega from Detonator. Uh, Chateau has been the only one coming out recently. Unfortunately, none of them could be here today. Uh, but we do have some really good representation here. Yeah, I mean, Dart Remix, I think this is the first major he's been to, too. The other only one I can think of is Summer Jam. Summer Jam, but yeah. That was like a very small uh, tournament from what I, for what I understand. Yeah, that so. was like, that was August of last year, I want to say. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it was definitely cool to see the, these online uh, personalities coming in to uh, show what they got offline, too. All right, here we can see Dart going to be rocking his signature dragon coil as the fun chuck and toe, just in case that's not working out. And clapback Cobra coming out by Para. One of the most annoying sets to fight against for any player. Is he going to be rocking the bub? No, he's going to be rocking the popper here. Coil, though, she does have a decent matchup against this, I think. She has a lot of tools to dash out of the way. The thing that's going to inhibit Dart is if he's getting red by that popper, because that popper on Cobra, once it's out, it's a giant cone of destruction that's just going to hurtle towards your face. And Quail does not have the best redirection of momentum in the world. Yeah. Surprisingly, so Para actually thinks that Clapback is the best arm in the game, from what I understand. So we'll have to see. I mean, he's at least sticking to the arm. We'll have to see how it goes down. Of course, this is a more or less difficult match for him. Para did lose to Astro Ninja over in uh, Winterside. So. Right. The difference there is Astro did not have a giant bleppy boy coming at him. <laughs> Whereas uh, Para here, I'm interested to see why he took the clapback though. Like clapback does not bounce back the laser from Dragon, mm -hmm. but the thing he might be going for is it also is a giant shield from Dragon. Yeah. So he he could slay the Dragon this way, but we'll have to see what he chooses to do. So far, he's got a lot of his damage out of the popper. The clapback so far has just kind of been his keep safe tool. Okay, Ooh, that rush, rush comes in. He's gonna land. Yeah. Para goes for the grab right there, and Dart is able to capitalize. Gets the nade into the Dragon. Ara right, just trying to feel his way in. Sets up the clapback right in his face. Dart just ends up taking it. Gets a knockdown here. That pillar is about to fall. Not standing strong for much longer. Oh, Ooh, man. yeah, Getting good grab. Getting with the clapback. A very dangerous spot to be in. Got reflected and trying to maneuver around. But Para was already one step ahead, conditioning his opponent to try and pick a defensive option. Yeah. And he's rolling with it here. Yeah. Don't you hate it when you just create pressure for yourself when you're <laughs> fighting against clapback Cobra? Ooh, good hit right there. Yep, just the popper going to be coming in and finishing Dart Remix off in round one. Yeah, Para looking very solid here on round one. But let's see if Dart Remix can find a response. Switching to, uh, well, actually, I think he kept the nades the whole time, so. Yeah, he, did he switch sides, though? I think he might have switched sides. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's, that might have been what it, it looked different from the first time. Not 100% sure, but the strategies so far seem the same. Para is going to go for his rush right here. Dart not in the way of the popper. He went for a pretty hard read with that angle. And Dart is just going to stay back. His shield a little bit low. His health is dropping, but still relatively even. All right, charging up those arms. And of course, Coil does get that third arm. Oh, it is wow. Like, wow. Tries to go for the unblockable and gets grabbed himself. Yeah, Para coming in, in again. Another grab, 175. 
All right, let's see what the response is. Okay, decides to fade back a little bit, waiting for Dart to try and figure out what he's going to do. And then he's going to start rush farming. Oh, here's getting it up for the rush. It's not going to land. Oh, it does get land. Actually, the three hits of the nade go through, knocking it down, and he gets 290-some damage. Breaks up the grab. Got the knockdown. Goes invisible, oh! but reads it. I thought he had the iframe still, but I guess not. All right, another reflection. Now we got to see where... Oh, that rush. That rush is risky business. He does have a nade out, but Para waits until the nade is long gone. Starts the rush, but misses the clap back. The wind element throwing him up in the air. Oh, try to dash oh. in. Oh, but the clap back comes back around. Kid Cobra is hot. Yes, that is a that is a thing we say. That's all I wanted to tell people. <laughs> I just wanted to tell them that he's an attractive snake man. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, yeah, Para gonna be taking the first game here. All right, let's see if there's gonna be a, a change by Dart. He does have an ice set if he needs to, which ice is the bane of Cobra, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Like, if you're locked down someone's mobility options, it's bad enough for them. But Kid Cobra thrives on only having his mobility options. And he has not the worst time in the game starting up one of his, like, momentum chains, you know? But still a bad enough time that it's a big disadvantage for uh, Para. Right. It looks like they're going to go to Scrapyard for this one. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like he had enough time to change his arm, so I think he's going to keep with the same set. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. Mm -hmm. No changes by Para either. Both of them just going straight over to the Scrapyard. Yep. First time we're seeing this stage. Only uh, two pillars, but they're metal, so they last for a very long time. Yeah, five hits, I believe. Yes. Or, of course, you could just chuck your opponent through him and just break yeah. him down. Nothing yeah. knocks him down like bodies. Ooh, Alrighty. they're dragging it. But Para, on the lower elevation, able to avoid the dragged laser. Man, Para just maneuvering around the aggression from Dart right now. Dart trying to keep himself back, farm that rush. But Closing in and getting those little chip damages from the clapbacks working out very nicely so far. Both of them about to get rushed. Dart already has his on the board. Ooh, he's going to try to advance right there, but Para is making good use of the height here. Dart has to float up top if he wants to make anything happen. Goes for his rush right here in the face of the popper. Misses the last hit, though. Only 325. Still about a third of Para's health, but probably could have gotten more. Yeah, I think the little lip of Scrapyard might have uh, messed it up just a little bit. Not enough landing time. But let's see. Okay, that's a knockdown. What's the read going to be? Okay, follows through, but doesn't get anything off of oh, it. But gets a grab right that there. That was just raw. I mean, the rush pressure, it, to be fair, yeah. is probably keeping Dart a little bit immobilized and fearful. Mm -hmm. But it's still something he could have caught on to. Yeah, it felt like there was like a slight... Oh, oh another wow. one! What is this man doing? Hey, man, if it works, it works, man. <laughs> Is this man trying to spread some kind of disease with his love? We're already at a convention, dude. You don't need to try a little harder. <laughs> All right, both of them have rush available, though, so we're going to have to see. Tries to go in for his own grab. The para being very elusive, getting around all of this aggression. Right, yeah, Dart's got to come down. He's got to start something. Oh, good, good, good nade right there. I think he thought Para was going to go for a rush right there. That's risky, considering Para has the rush right there. He's trying to make these plays happen. He really has to, though. He's down one game in a best of three. Not going to go for the rush, though. It's just going to go to time. I didn't even realize that time went to zero. They were going so intense at each other that uh, I just completely forgot about it. Yeah, sometimes, I don't know. I don't think time probably eluded them. I think Dart probably just realized, like, maybe if I get in his face, I can find an opportunity. Yeah. But that's usually, the last few seconds are when people tend to panic. Oh, wow, no time to shield? I guess the dragon hadn't retracted yet. But weird clashes happening right there with the dragon catching the uh, popper right there and clashing with it in the size upgrade. Right. Oh, oh wow. wow. This grab kind of just kind of snuck its way around all of the uh, all the arms that Para Ooh! threw out. And the dragon's still coming in clutch right there, dragging to the sides of and under. Clapback as well. It doesn't have much horizontal reach, but what it does uh, did not pay off right there. Alrighty. Oh, the clapback again. Yeah, just right in front of his face. It's difficult to because these arms kind of move straight, so it's difficult to get around it. So he's going right. to get straight reflected there. And the bad thing about that is if Para just kind of plants that clapback there, because it's not going to move, if Para, or if um, if Dart tries to retreat, he gets grabbed. If he tries to stay in shield, clap back, cancel, grab. Right. It sucks. Alrighty, Dart just uh, staying on the hill, trying to farm that rush. He's got it available. Ooh, oh, this oh, is a, wow. This is a hill he seems content to die on, trying to get back up to it. No, he's just going to try to float around. Goes for his rush right here, tries to catch Para in his mobility, and Para responds with a rush of his own, but not quick enough to catch Dart. Dart tries to move again, but is able to get his shield back up in time. Yeah, just keeping up that chip damage. Ooh, Ooh last hit for hit. Dart. 
Yeah, just one more hit, and that's going to be it. For oh, yeah. and that is it. Almost gets the trade, but the popper catches him a little too soon. And that is going to be a 2-0 for Para. That is going to be Dart dropping out of the bracket. But very well played for him, showing off his stuff. And now he's going to go retreat to his Aces buddies, I assume. Yep, he's got to go back and run that bracket. So very nice oh, stuff man, from Dart, so. <laughs> you got to go lose in top six and then just be like, okay, now quit your friendlies. Yep, so, but good job to Dart Remix making it to top six here today. Very nice stuff all around. Yeah, uh, I, again, nice, nice stuff. <laughs> Arms, nice stuff. Arms, yes. nice shirts available <laughs> for purchase. Fellas TV. Where are they? Uh, Fellas TV, I think, somewhere. Uh, check the first Twitter. <laughs> I'm not as well informed as I should be. I'm sure someone check in the, the, in the check Twitch the first chat first will have that Twitter. available. So, we'll see. Oh, yeah, we got the, the signs back there. Kid Cobra is indeed hot. Going to be moving on into the, the loser semi seat. Yeah, pair in a guaranteed fourth place spot right now. Yeah, I think. Um, We're that? probably going to get winner's finals next. Uh, Hanukkah, yeah, who would that be? We'll, who's on the other side? I don't uh, remember. I think it's... Uh, Astro? Yes, it is. Astro, Astro yeah. yeah. Hanukkah yeah. Astro. Mm -hmm. That's going to be an interesting one. Twintel and uh, Dr. Coyle. Yeah. Now, I remember the last time that these two played from offline. I don't remember. I think it was Heart of Battle, actually. Yeah. I think uh, Hanukkah barely lost in a Game 3 scenario. Yeah, and I think then, Astro did take that yeah, tournament. And then really Astro... Signed. Uh, moved on to like 3-0 everyone basically in that yeah. tournament. Yeah, so. he was winner's side on that one, mm -hmm. right? I think Hanukkah definitely was the hardest uh, hardest match in there. So we're going to have to see how that goes down. Yeah, the clash that kind of comes down between those two is Hanukkah, very fast player, very aggressive player, likes to stay in your face. Most people use Actrasora as that like defensive tool, use it to try to like camp people out. But he uses it to try to just charge in as fast as possible. He acts like 30 to 50 feral hogs with children in the yard. <laughs> and just charges in on you. Astro, also a very slow, methodical player, likes to capitalize on your weaknesses and your defenses and then throw out those charged punches when he's got three of them. And he's a great dancer. Yeah, that's true. He's got the moves <laughs> to prove it. IRL and in-game, this boy knows how to schmove. He's got that fedora, and you know that ups his dancing skill by like five points. Yeah. All righty. We're just going to have to wait and see. I think Hanukkah also has his smash uh, pull right now, so he might be finishing up a round before he goes Oh, on. yeah, very so we'll have true. To let's check and see. Uh, yeah, I don't see them. him around. I don't see Astro either, actually, technically. Hanukkah should Oh, Astro's right there. He's very cookies. Oh, I see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, just look okay. for the Kid Cobra's hot sign. You'll find him. Yeah, but anyways, guys, hope you are enjoying Switch Fest 2019 so far. We got one of our main games here on the stream right now. We're in top six of arms, of course. Waiting for legs or hands, whatever will come out next. But yes, yeah. waiting for. I'm saying it's earlobes. I'm telling you all right now, it's earlobes. Think about it. Think about the cool things you can do. Like you can equip different gauges for like different elements. Think about this. It's a cool thing. Or like elbows. Elbows, I think, would be cool too. I know. I know it's weird, but imagine like shoot. Like imagine like Starfinger from JoJo with your elbow. Okay. Think how cool that would be. You could like lay like traps and just flick. Look at the flick of that wrist. Elbow. I'm not making this the picture. <laughs> Moving on. I oh think, my god. Um, let's see. And of course, 2GG hosting this event. Thank you so much. We have so many games happening this weekend. We got Mario Kart. We got Super Mario Maker, I believe. We got yeah. uh, Mario Party. Uh, Smash. Um, Arms. Aces. Pokken. Uh, Splatoon. Splatoon. Uh, Yu -Oh. Puyo Puyo Tetris. Puyo Puyo Tetris and Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like Hanukkah is ready. He's, okay. Uh, he's cool. down to. Uh, get things started. Cool. Now we can end my Astro. incessant rambling. I'm sure you guys at home are all glad. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you <laughs> you here are also <laughs> very glad. Uh, we, we've never commentated something uh, offline together, so this is a very interesting experience because uh, online... You know I'm exactly the same now. Yes. I don't change. My energy has not diminished one bit. I'm still just as chaotic, baby. Woo! Yeah. Sorry. If it, if he would probably be either chaotic good or chaotic neutral, I think. Oh, I play, I play chaotic good when I play Dungeons & Dragons, but what that equates to is smash everything. <laughs> I play a warlock. I can smash everything I want. That sounds like chaotic evil. But anyways, moving on. Yeah, we're going to wait for these two to get started. Uh, I think he's just getting his stuff. But anyways. Yeah, probably. He's over there at the setup, I think, coaching or something? I'm not exactly sure. I don't know. It's not too hard to find Hanukkah. You just look for the big pink man. <laughs> All right. Yeah, looks like they're getting ready. And Astro is not the one moving up. It's other players. Are they doing? Oh, I guess they're doing loser semis first. Oh, OK. Cool. So it's going to be uh, Twin versus Para then for this. OK, sure. Hey. Going to be interesting to see what uh, they both bring to the table. I mean, Twin, we probably know what he's bringing. It's some form of Lola here. Yeah. Para, though, he's the wild child here. 
Like, I think so far we've only seen him play Cobra on stream because there's been yeah. one match on stream. I think at his uh, peak, Paro was considered one of the best players uh, in the world. Oh, arguably. oh yeah, top five. Uh, however, yeah, because of his long hiatuses, it's very difficult to know where to put him in an actual tournament bracket. Right. So I believe in this tournament, he's, uh, he's seeded six. Four. He's fourth seed. He's fourth seed? Fourth okay, seed. okay, yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely difficult to see. Uh, Astro, of course, going to be the first seed because he did win like the, the past few tournaments. Yeah, been pretty to. much everything he's been yeah, to. Yeah, he's recently. pretty much undefeated as far as I've seen, like in most of the tournaments as he's entered. So. Yeah, he, he's twenty. Twin 2.0. Twin, twin yeah. 2 the new, the right, I remember everyone was talking about how Dr. Coyle was like one of the most broken characters in the game. Yeah. Like, and this like, man proves it. This yeah. man just comes and proves it. Yeah, it took a while for the Coils to come out, but yeah. they're finally here. Yeah, him him and Dastardly and then the Japanese players, definitely the ones pushing it forward. Yeah, Chateau with his Coil as well. Like Pretty crazy Chateau, yeah. Chateau with his Coil. If anyone remembers my dumb butt equipping Parabola against that at Smash and Splash, I still have nightmares about that every single day. Oh, that sounds like a you problem. It was me, Rob. I just want to prove it's good, dude. <laughs> I just want people to understand that why I love this arm and that I didn't run it in any serious matches here today. <laughs> I love you, baby. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alrighty. <sighs> Looks like they're just uh, setting their arms, getting things ready. Yep. Twins just gonna. Right, let's see. Can we screen peek him? Okay. Yeah, we Looks can. like. Looks oh, he's like using his Biffler set. Oh, and oh, yeah, he has Biffler and Hydra. Yeah, just in case he feels like it's a better pick for some scenario. Yeah. I don't know why. If he, he knows that Par is probably not going to heavy. Though he might. He used to play a mechanic on Max Brass mm -hmm. quite a bit. I want to take a guess here. You can pinch me if I'm wrong. You can actually pinch me. I will give you the permission to physically put me in pain. I know okay. you've been wanting to the whole weekend. Um, All right. If he doesn't go B&B &B here, pinch me. Brick, pinch me. He went to Springman. He went this. That wasn't hard at all. Oh my gosh, you little baby wanna, man! I didn't want to hurt. I you. told you, you can, you little baby man. Okay, well. All right. You know what? I Para. Uh, uh, Para is going to be going with his spring man, a character I didn't think he was going to be picking up again. He he kind of seemed like he was not very enthusiastic to play spring again. And if he wanted to go with a deep light character, he'd just go Tron. So I'm wondering what he's choosing here. I think maybe the thing he might be thinking of is when he plays Tron, he plays with Ice Dragon. And I don't think anyone wants to play an Ice Dragon Ditto. Mm -hmm. That just seems like those laser defense grids from spy movies, but really slow. Yeah. Oh, stun into grab. Alrighty, shout outs to Superior Fan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> another oh, grab. Wow. Okay. Shout outs to hugging people. Yeah. Look at like third. a Max for a mummy player grabs right bleh. now. Three grabs in a row. That's crazy already. I mean, that, there is the thing called the para grab. The overhead grab in neutral is attributed to Para greatly. So he's playing double glove, to be fair, which he's not doing, and I'm a little bit disappointed in. But he's doing very well. Goes for the rush in the counter rush right here. He's going to land it against Twin. Gets 250 damage. And Twin now down to the last hit if his stun lands. And it does. Gets the grab. Man, you don't see Tribal too often, but when it lands, man, it hurts very hard, especially when you get all of those, um, all of those hits in. Yeah, right, just getting those see. grabs. That's just so much damage that's tacked up. He only needed like five of them, and then he was done with the match already. Right, let's see. Is Twin going to make any change? He can't make any arms changes, but let's see what he's going to be doing playstyle wise You can see already he's trying to play a lot more campy right now. Yeah. In the last match, he didn't really have the time to do it, but at the start, he wasn't really doing max camp. He was just kind of throwing stuff out, but now he's got those low-to-the-ground dragons that can really screw up a player's timing and deflect timing. Yep. Para trying to close in the gap right now. Actually, both of these two starting to clock in. Ooh, good oh, straight yeah. hit right there. Twin got it really lucky with that one. Para almost got a hit off. Yeah. Now he's just trying to play to the side. One thing Para is doing really well at is one, not letting that rush. He did really well about that. Yeah, but second, right behind the pillar, very smart. At least he got rid of it too, so that Twin could play a little bit less defensively. But still, he's got that open space now. All right, now he's got the knockdown. Just gotta, gotta worry about that rush. If he can get rid of it, then it's already gonna be a great spot for Para to be in. The thing I love that he's not doing is um, not grabbing. I don't love that he's not that he's doing that. Um, but the thing I love he's doing, I can finally maybe talk about it, is he is not getting hit. He's not letting the Biffler chain him. Yeah. That is the thing a lot of Springmen felt kind of susceptible to. I know, because I did this earlier today. <laughs> um, but Biffler is one of those arms that really screws up a Springman trying to start his dash chains. Mm -hmm. Along with like Popper and Cracker and arms kind of like that. Biffler is so quick and so easy to chain along that Springman, with a hard momentum to carry, gets screwed over by it really bad. Another stun into a grab. Okay, all right. now all of a sudden Paris getting a really good place. Stun He's grab kills. Stun grab kills if he lands it. Rush kills if he lands it. He doesn't land it. Twin gets the rush up. Oh, is he going to be able to use it? Lead, though. He's going to go for it. It's not going to break shield. Not going to really do anything for him here unless that chips. But no, Para dodges out of the way. Oh, yeah, just barely out of the way. And that's just oh, one wow. pixel. Like five health difference. Dang. Yeah, definitely. One more chip, I think, from Para. And that would have actually been either a tie or he would have won. So. 
All right, let's see what they're able to bring to the table right here. Twins starting off with the camping. Para retreating to make sure he gets that initial thief like that he really needs to start. That's very smart. Don't be afraid to retreat if you're a Springman to start your initial dash chains. You're going to go for that aggression soon anyways. Might as well build it up safely. All right, what's the call going to be? Okay, moves right around. Yeah, it seems like Twin actually isn't too sure what his calls are going to be right here. After getting close to death that last time, he's playing a little bit more hesitantly. Yeah. Understandable, patience is never a bad thing, mm -hmm. but hesitation can kill. And Ooh, right there. Barely clipped right there. Yeah, didn't have the opportunity to bounce out of the way or air dash since his dragon was still out. Para is still sitting on a perfect, I believe. That is going to change once he gets hit by this ice dragon. Oh, Twin yeah. not going to go for anything fancy, just a confirmed grab. Yeah, decides to just take the grab there. Alrighty, and then, okay, gets to parry, close into the gap. Oh, good backup right there. Yeah. I really like backing up right there. It makes Para think that he's going to go forward and you burn that rush, when in reality, he's just going to play safe, get for that dragon. And right here, he is playing very safely. That Biffler causing a lot of issue for Para's advancements. Going to go for the rush right here, and gets parried down by the toaster, and Para is able to shield himself. Yeah, very unfortunate. Ooh. Oh, well, we got a blind. Okay, comes back up. Yeah, Bind does unfortunately doesn't really matter when you're getting knocked down out of the air like that. Yeah. But it's still helpful for Twin to set up. Oh, Para Alrighty. trying to stray, try, try bolt him, but Twin is playing so hard to his shield. Didn't play hard enough there. Lets his Ice Dragon down and his guard with it. That tribal not quite connecting. Oh, that's, that's so close! Almost got hit! Seven seconds left on the clock. Twin needs to get something happening. He's going to get rushed in one second. Going to burn it here, and then it's going to land. Twin takes game one, barely. That was crazy. One second left on the clock, too. Ah, oh, man, I want to say good distribution of rush, but he didn't have rush to distribute until the very end. Very good play right there by Twin. Very good recognition that his yellow Dorito was ready to rip. <laughs> Yeah, alrighty, so Twin barely clutching that out, so he's gonna take that first game there. Alright, let's see, Para might make the switch over. I'm telling you, the BNB is coming out right now. I think it's coming. Because, here's what I think about that. Although P Twin does have the Biffler and Hydra, what he doesn't have is something that can test Barks super well when he does his signature way of bouncing on him. The Ice Dragon sucks against BNB if he's camping on Bark properly. Yeah. And he knows how to camp on Bark properly. There's a very few of Master that art. It's like him and Tunarupa, but those two are so hard to take down off their high dog. Well, uh, that, that whole segment, Please, that whole segment do it again. Useless. Do it again. God, you're just a baby, man. I don't want to hurt you. Please. Yes, you do. I've seen the threats you've been leaving in our Discord chats. All right, moving on. <laughs> Here we go. Starting on Buster Beach. Much more narrow, so it's going to give a little bit more room for Para to ride and try and close in the gap. The horizontal movement, not quite as advantageous for Lollipop on this stage. I'm kind of surprised, though, that he went for this against Twin. Like, Twin with Dragon here, if he gets Para into one of the side compartments, uh -huh. he's basically playing a MOBA right now. Right. He's got those two lanes. He's got to choose which one his little minions of the tribals are going to go down. And it can be a losing situation. But so far, Para has been keeping him at, like, a sideways angle. Like kind of diagonally, and it's been really helping him, but kind of screwed himself into the corner here. These little buffer areas are really bad for people to get out of, especially against quick arms. All right, I like those deflects. Ooh, the rush comes out, but he... Oh, that's it. counter rush. Going to start with the roaster, or the toaster, excuse me, only 240. Not as much as it could have been, but still, sometimes knocking down a rush is more important than the rush that you get yourself. Yeah, he had the positioning on that pocket too, but not quite going to be able to take advantage of it. And damn, Twin just jumps in with the grab. Yeah, he's going to throw him up, more damage. throws him up against the bumper too. I think Para wanted probably to fly back even further to get some uh, dash chain started, but he's not going to be able to. Does get a grab chain though starting. Twin now down to a percent where stun grab will kill. All right. What's Ooh, almost got it. Gets the toaster instead. Wow, Last man. hit for Twin. Yeah, that left arm cross up definitely kept Twin on his toes Ooh, here. Ooh, very close. But the Biffler is able to hit down. Oh, bad trade for Twin, though. Para able to get it despite the Ice Dragon hitting him. All righty. Moving on to round two here. Para looking a little bit more confident. Starting to get his groove on the aggression, at least. Really Ooh. able to capitalize on it. Oh, and just starts off with a rush. Another 250. Okay. Gets about a quarter of his health down. Let's see, Twin's gonna get his rush up soon, and Twin with rush is a very scary. He trips from a totally defensive and zony player to up in your face, gets the Biffler, is not able to juggle the dragon at first, but does get it eventually. 340 damage gonna be applied in the corner here, and gets hit with a Dendi grab. Very potent combo. Trying to go in with the grab, not quite. Twin trying to find a way to make a good mixture of aggression and defense. Not able to find it, instead finds a toaster in his face. 
Parra's rush is going to be scary here. Instead, he just goes for the toaster. Man, that patience. Ooh, bad news bears for Twin. No, Twin is able to stay out of the way. His shield was just quick enough. Oh, the stun. Not quite going to get anything oh, else. Arm's but the broken. arm break. Oh, just at enough range. Yeah, Good right thing for Twin right there. Going to have to make a quite a mighty comeback, and he's not going to be able to. 1-1 one, one right now. Yeah. I love that little play right there in the middle where Para was just waiting for Twin to try and burst, burst off him with something, and then Para immediately reacted to it afterwards. That was a great response. So I think that threw him off on like how he can move, and so now we're going 1-1 one, one here in the set. All right. Fight and bark. Fight and bark. Fight and bark. No. I want to see it. Oh, no, no signal. Who picked what? Okay, we have more signal. Great. Okay, we have signal back. Okay, I, we're good. I'm screen peeking this. It's not, it's not the BNB. I want the BNB. <laughs> it's not the BNB. Sedge, I want it so bad. It's not gonna happen. Sedge. I maybe miss, maybe loses finals, he'll get it. He's the fourth best character in the game. I miss I miss BNB so bad. He okay. does think it's a very good character. It's the quietest I've ever been. I don't like this. I'm going back to the energy! Heck yeah, back to my clips. I think I've probably right. been incessantly. Okay, we're going to be a Dolce. Happy. Oh, interesting choice here. This was this was Twins counter pick? Yeah. Is he going to, he's going to Glusher oh, set. Oh, Glusher set. That's why. Glusher yeah. set. Makes Every sense. time he goes on the stage, he's basically going to Glusher set. So. Well, I've seen him run the Dragon set here, and I'm like, it doesn't work super well. Let's see what he's going to be bringing. The Tri-Blast, a good example of another screwer of Springman. Glusher 2 has a hidden explosion element to it that not many people think about when they're playing against it, but you really have to be on your game against it. It can knock you out of rush. It can mess you up when you're going for shield counters. Yeah. There's just a lot it can screw with here. Twin, though, is making most example of the heavy element that the uh, the Glusher brings to the table, yeah. using it to counteract any flying toasters coming at his face. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're closed into a small space like this, the Glusher can cover a lot of room where the arms want to try and be. But if Para can get really close, then it can kind of just hop over him, and then he can get some Oh, going. not going to cancel. I thought that for sure that Tribus was going to catch him, but able to cl clear the air and is able to cancel that out. All right, let's see, Para, he's got himself in a decent size Ooh, lead right awesome. now, but the rush is going to come in, and he closes in the gap, goes in for it, the knockdown. What's the option going to be from Twin 5 -0? He goes in with the super dash, but Para Ooh, it's switched around. Para able to shield it. That is going to probably break, though. Yeah, gets, no, not the restand. Good hit for Twin there, though. 175 could be cru crucial, but we are seeing Para in the red with rush now. The charged arms are scary as crap, but Twin is able to compose himself and get his shield back up in time. Yeah, that was really scary, but both of these two still oh! going at it. Jumps right over to Glusher, and he's trying Twin! to close in the gap, putting How him into Twin the corner. How able to move like this? Jeez, Rick. Oh my gosh, does get hit and is able to live one more hit, but the next one is Curtains for the Clown. Oh man, the visible emotion coming from Para, looking like he's very annoyed right now. Very, very difficult. I mean, he's up. Why would you be annoyed? You're up. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. All right, same arms by both of them. Para trying to start off with a Para grab. <laughs> Very potent Para power. Twin right. is just keeping him out right now. Para trying to find a way in. Twin not trying to find a way in. He is very content just staying at that range, but now once he's in the corner, this is his time to shine. And Para thinks this is his time to burn that rush. He lets it off, not able to land it. Para is getting advanced on again by Twin. We've seen it in the scenario. Oh my gosh, what was that? What did they confirm it with? Was it the Glusher explosion? I think that, it, I think that it was. wasn't Tri Blast. What was that? It looked like just it looked just a, just enough amount of hit stuns. It looked really crazy. All right, here we Ooh, go. Ooh, toasters though. though. Double toaster, Springman. Now this is the Para play. This <laughs> is peak Para perfection. Yeah. How many more P words and plosives can I put in the end of the sentence before yeah. the period? Remember back when we used defaults? This was like one of the top tier yeah. loadouts because of it. Remember back, back when gloves were still good? Oh yeah, always. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but he's got the rush available. Trying to close in the gap. Twin being very careful when he Ooh, throws on his Oh, good hit right very there. Great, very Twin good just needs to get, I think explosion splash damage would do it. Or just a missile to the face. That does it too. Yeah. Damn. All righty. All right. We're going to the last round here. Let's see what they're going to be choosing here. Para still going to stick with the double toaster. He's got his rush online. Twin not too far away, though. This set builds it up faster than you think. Glusher gets rushed with every single bounce. Twin goes for the bounce himself and is able to cancel it out with the Tri-Blast. Para gets a quick jab in, but not enough to knock him down. That one, though, will connect with Para, or excuse me, Tin, while he's in the air. All right, he's got the corner pressure. What's the option going to be? Goes in with a super dash. Yeah. yeah. He's got another time for an option. Oh, oh and, and another super in. dash. Let's see, can we get three? Three super dashes. Twin gonna go for the rush right here. I think he was honestly predicting, par predicting. 
That's some that's so Raven crap. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was very difficult for him to maneuver around, but he's got another opportunity. But dang, this is such a tough place to Ooh. be in for Para. Honestly, I think Twin wants to keep those tri bolts or the tri blast bolts uncharged because there are three separate hits right there, all of which he can wander into. <gasps> he is so lucky that that toaster went under. Oh my word. If that did not go under, that was lights out. Oh, he's got to make him. Oh. Something happened here. He's got 40 seconds on the clock and rush available. The oh, almost hit! Happen. Goes for the rush right here! Twin tries to get it! Gets the Glusher overhead the rush! And is able to take that match! What an intense end to this! Oh my goodness! Oh my dang! Man. Who? Who said Glusher was bad? Who said Glusher was low tier? Who said the Glusher needs to get out of here? Glusher uh. coming in, winning that entire set for Twin 5 0! Oh, why am I claw gripping? Because you're enjoying this tournament so far? Turning into a bear. Because <laughs> I can hardly bear all the tension in here. But I'm bum, gamer. <laughs> Alrighty, but yeah, Para or Para going to be falling at fourth place today. Very, very solid showing, though. For, especially very for not, not playing yeah. for a very long time either. I yeah, that, was, that was his seed. Mm -hmm. Very, very good placement here. I don't think anyone expected him to like fall any earlier than that. Yeah. And that's really good. Meeting expectations is like... Best thing you can do. All that tension's off your shoulder. Yeah. Will we see a twit longer after this? Who knows? He's probably gonna be like, "All right, guys, I had an amazing time, but I am going to be officially, 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 officially retiring." Well, if he writes twit longer, that's the unspoken rule of arms. If you write the twit longer, you're not quitting arms. I feel attacked when people say that because I made the twit longer. I swear I'm done. And yeah, it is the same thing that you say in Smash. It's like the more pronounced the retirement is, the more likely they are not to quit. Oh yeah. yeah Cold, the, shor the shorter the retirement period. Cold Stare set the worst example when he was going to retire after Smash and Splash, and then came back two weeks later with like the only actual sponsorship in arms. Oh man. He just like said he's leaving the bar, and then the owner gave him the keys. It's absolutely amazing to watch. And speaking of amazing to watch. Finally, our next two players are up for winners finals. Astro Ninja and Hanukkah Jamboree. You mean Hakuna Jabroni? That's right. Man, I wish EE -E was here. I could have said the Hakuna Jabroni line. Nobody would have gotten it. Three people would have laughed. <laughs> uh, but it would have been a good three people. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, Astro Ninja taking out Para, and Hanukkah was the one that took out... Uh, uh, took Dart to Losers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, Hanukkah actually moving on very far into the bracket. Let's see if he's going to play his seed too. This is definitely going to be an interesting matchup. Like I said before, Hanukkah and Astro made it to game three last round last time that they played uh, in Heart of Battle. So, Right, yeah, as we said before, these two very different play styles that interact in very different and interesting ways. It's going to be different than anything we've seen before today, I think, because while Twin is a zoner character, he's very, very aggressive with his zoning. Yeah. It's, not, it's not pathetic, wimpy like methodical stuff. He's throwing them out constantly, whereas Astro likes to take his time, likes to make sure he's got his punches ready for the right moment. Exactly. You can see the game face on Astro right now. All right, let's see. Is Hanukkah going to ask him the gentleman to sparring ring? He does that every time. It's his best map. And he <laughs> always says, hey, sparring ring? Yo, yo, sparring that's ring? Not even, that's not even a default map. Like <laughs> like, uh, like in Smash, uh, you say Pokemon Stadium too, but that's like a very, very volatile stage depending on the character you're playing against. I know, but ring. everybody who plays an aggressive character will tell you it's the most neutral stage in the game because they want you to believe that it's okay to let them take you there. It is not okay to take you there. Do not take sparring ring offers from kids or from... From kids? I mean, from pe from strange men, kids. Okay? From strange men with beards and wear all pink. <laughs> Definitely do not take it from them. All right, let's see. Have we set stage yet? I don't know. Looks like Astro is just doing his button check. Yeah. Oh, it looks like they're about to start right now. Yeah, they're going to be going in with the bands. Astro, of course, is a very interesting character in the world of arms. A very interesting player. He, he speaks more with his gameplay than he does with his words. He does speak with his words as well, but his gameplay is definitely where you kind of see his personality shine for sure. I think I saw, I think I might have seen a lockjaw on him in that test. Mm -hmm. Which, okay. if he ran a lockjaw, that is not his norm. That is, like, not the norm for anyone besides radio. Oh, wow, we're actually going sparring, even though they did the Oh, bad. my gosh. Han did Hanukkah offer that up? Did Hanukkah put that out on the table and he just took it? Don't take sparring ring from random strangers, kids. All right, let's see what they're going to be able to do here. Astro, I think, what, what am I seeing right now? Okay, okay, I see nades. Oh, Hanukkah's pulling the, the, the stalling card, or you try to or try to slow down Astro and his momentum before they even start the match. I okay. see. I see you. He's got to get his Gwen Stefani on, dude. He's got his gamer mix. Yeah. All right, let's see. I think I think I saw Astro's loadout for a second. I think I saw Tri-Blast, Nade, and Lockjaw, which is just the explosive trio. Very good arms against uh, Twin Tell, though. 
Yeah. For, for different reasons for all I of mean, them. just very strong arms for Coil in general, yeah. too. Yeah, like, very strong arms in general, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they all do something different for him, though, where Tri-Blast gets you that, that good side-to-side -side movement that is going to help you keep a, a grounded Twin Tail down. Nate is going to help you keep an aerial Twin Tail down. Lockjaw is going to help you screw up a Twin Tail who's not prepared to deal with two missiles. Right. Let's okay. see. Yep, we do have that triple explosive set. Hanukkah going with a variation on the normal set here. That is definitely an ad, but you know what? Yeah, 2GG. 2GG hosting Switch Fest 2019 right now. Here we go into the first match, and they're just going at it with the arms right now. All right, double nade coil. Welcome to the real world, kids. This is the meta. This is probably the most potent set anyone could have theory crafted in the world. Hanukkah going to get knocked down with the 150 damage that is applied to him every single time he lands a charged hit. And I just love these slight directional changes from Astro. Every time he thinks oh, he's going to to a direction, he moves back and trips up Hanukkah there. Going to go ahead. Oh, and there's the dance that we were talking about earlier. You know, slight directional changes. Very rapid ones. Yeah. Hanukkah is going to try to assert his dominance right now. Has a chipped off uh, Chakram arm. It's going to stay applied, but he might be able to find some room to move soon. Got to back off, though. Yeah. Ram Rush, though, is able to close gaps so easily and frequently. Who knows, honestly, how this rush could turn everything around for him. Yeah, we're going to have to see, but he's got to start with something. These little blasts are going to be very big for him, and, of course, he already gets rushed next. 40 seconds left on the clock. That's plenty of time for him to land something and get this Ooh, next Ooh, there's game. another like, rush. Right now, there we go. Closes out the first round very easily for Astro. I'm not sure why he decided that of all times, now was the time to burn the rush when he could have just dashed to the side and gone for like a grab or two fists. But if you're going to end the round, you got to end it in style. Hey, hey, hey. Sometimes it's not about being optimal. It's about sending a message. Sometimes it's about saying that wasn't suboptimal. That's not my message. <laughs> all right. Sig with a double nade. Hanukkah going to burn the rush right away. Coil, coils out of it. To no one's surprise, gets the mini dance in there at the end. Does take some explosion damage, but it's only 50. Goes for the invis. Yeah, and for those of you that may not play arms too much, yeah, that's considered a kind of a form of taunting. Um, it's kind of similar to like how teabagging is in like FPSs or just like straight up taunting in Smash, for example. Well, let's see. Razor played the double nade pressure, and Hanukkah rolls forward, putting all the beauty and gymnastics of Twin Tail on display. He is able to shield that double nade rush. Very yeah. difficult to do. A lot of shield break damage on that one. Even though he didn't get much damage off of that rush, he used it to do an immediate retract so he could keep up that corner pressure. Not quite able to get anything out of it, but still a great Ooh. play from Astro. Gets the knockdown. That's really big for Astro to try and take this next game. Ooh, Hanukkah is closing in, though, but Astro seems so content to play at this range. He's just constantly oppressed. I guess the oppressor is rising up. Ooh, and a Ooh, big grab hit. comes in there. Looking very solid. Gonna go ahead and try and close it out with the grab, but the rush comes back in. Not gonna land, though. That is gonna do a lot of chip. Twintel tries to make a play happen right there. Not able to land it, though. Astro very content to just dash to the side instead of going for anything damaging. He's got all the time in the world to end this. He yeah. doesn't need to make any big plays anytime soon. And that's gonna be the left, or the right hook, excuse me, that's gonna take that game. It feels like... Astro's controlling the pace of the match, but more so than that, every time Hanukkah tries to start something, he's more getting only damage off Crossfire. He doesn't get anything started on his own accord, you know? Right. No, I agree. I think Astro, he plays such a slow-paced match. You'd think, I could rush this guy down, change it all up in his face. But he knows that's what you want to do, because who wants to play against a slow double nade coil, right? He knows that this is infuriating everyone around him. So he completely expects you to rush in there. And that's why he's got those nades. They are one of the best arms at snuffing. It's such a good pick for really any scenario. You see the slight smirk coming from Astro's face? Like His entire personality is a slight smirk. Have yeah, you talked basically. to Astro? Yeah, it's just like the smirk, the smirkiest of smirks right there. Smirkiest. Yes. <laughs> if, he's, if he's dipped in mud, is it a murky smirk? Huh? If he's, if he's dipped in mud, is it the murkiest, smirkiest smirk? Yes. I don't know why he would be dipped in mud, but uh, I guess Hamlet's into something that... Okay, anyways, moving on. We're going to DNA Lab. That was a very strong start for Astro. I'm going to have to see how Hanukkah wants to try and turn this back around. Uh, because with a complete arm change. Yeah. Well, right. let's see. Switching over, looking a little bit more like default to Intel here. Has the Parasol up. Not an arm I'd expect anyone to bring out in this bracket. It's not used very often. What it does bring to the table, though, if you remember Malieve's Fun Chuck from earlier, it brings a lot of similar parrying power to it with a little bit more speed, just less control and uh, curvability to it. Yeah, but we'll have to see. I mean, Nade and just in general Coil has a lot of different angles he can approach your opponent at, so it might make it difficult for Parasol actually to do the job that Hanako may or may not want it to do. We'll have to see. Already, no damage taken so far, but I spoke too soon. Go ahead and get that explosion. Let's we'll see how he starts the aggression. Ooh. No, just counter rush right there. Just pokes right through Hanaka. Doesn't take the opportunity to get anything set up. Instead, just takes the opportunity to make his opponent a big, angry gamer. 
This could be a Gamer Rage moment if I've ever seen one. Yeah, just uh, maneuvering around the pillars, making it difficult for Hanukkah to try start aggression. Yeah, just the defensive play on this stage makes it so difficult for Hanukkah to really get anything started. You see that, yeah, just mainly crossfire, not yeah. getting anything really big on the conversions or no corner pressure coming from Hanukkah. Okay, this is Hanukkah's counter. Hanukkah hates the stage. I don't know what he thought was like, I gonna achieve by this. Maybe he just hates him, uh, himself a little more than the stage right now. I don't know. Yeah, decided to save that rush that time around. Gonna be taking round one. All right, we're gonna have to see. All right, switch over to the Hydra. Good play right there. That's going to be able to cut through a lot of things very quickly. Very fast arm, very fast shielding, very fast recognition of the shield drop by Astro. That's one thing he loves to do is capitalize on uh, late shield drops against rushes that just aren't coming out. Right. Ooh, gets the nade, but not able to get the explosion element. Just gets hit a little bit too quickly, but is able to confirm another explosion element into like five more. Right, staying right on either side. Stays right behind the pillar. Ooh, good parry up right there. Astro is now going more on the offensive, goes for the rush right here. Hanukkah didn't have enough time to shield. I think the Parasol was still in like the very end of its retraction. Yeah. And that allowed Astro to capitalize. A little bit unfortunate. Yeah, and Hanukkah is just so difficult. Oh, doesn't get canceled. And that's the one time the Parasol will ever show any amount of curve. And then it decides <laughs> just to come for your butt on that rush. Man, that is unfortunate. Okay, gonna go ahead and get that damage. But man, it just looks so difficult. It's difficult to say like what Hanukkah's doing wrong because, you know, you got a character that's so strong in this current meta and already going in with the rush every single time. Astro is just able to get rushed so quickly and the way he's playing defensively while keeping Hanukkah occupied by all the arms that are coming at him. It makes it so difficult to really stop Astro's game plan. It's almost foolproof in a way. Right, which is weird because when you want to stop Astro's game plan, you think, I'll just assert my own over him. And then his game plan is, I'm going to assert my game plan over your game plan. And it becomes like that Sicilian scene from The Princess Bride. We were wondering, whose poisoned cup is worse? Uh, in sure. the end, in the end, you just haven't seen the movie. No. You haven't seen one of the best movies of all time. No. Do you watch any movies? Yes. Do you want to watch Killer Bean Forever with me and Dart later? <laughs> it's an entire animated feature about assassinating, like, lima beans. Sure, why not? Yes! Okay, but yeah, Perfect. Astro going up 2-0. All right, let's see what he's going to be bringing to the table. Is there going to be, oh my gosh, he actually takes the nade off for once. I don't know if this is some kind of power play or some kind of assertion. Yeah, I think, I think he's just going to experiment with the lockjaw, see how it goes. Lockjaw, a very interesting arm. I feel like there's really nothing like it. When it's charged, it shoots out a laser first, and then, yeah, moves in. Yeah, it's yeah. a very interesting arm. Yeah, first you get the meatball, then the spaghetti arm comes afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And then he lays on the little sauce of that tri-blast explosion. There's a lot that's going for this set right here, especially augmented by Coil's movement. Because yeah. on, on a non-Coil character, very slow arm, like retraction's fast, but actually putting it out there is very difficult. And so the only characters I've really seen use it are like Min Min when Radio plays that, and Coil. Twin Tails sometimes as well, but it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, but right now it seems like Astro's really making it work. It does screw over Twin Tails quite well too. Oh, gets Sitting a right knockdown there. finally. Let's see what Hana can start with the aggression. Gets right into it. Ooh, All right, he gets the yeah. rush. Uh, I don't want to say that was predictable, but it was a little bit of like a last-ditch effort type situation right there. Yeah. He, he was able to maintain corner pressure a little bit longer because of it, but the way Coil moves, it's very difficult to be able to predict. What he pretty much had one shot to predict how he was going to move back out of the stage. Ooh, Astro putting on some severe pressure with explosions, bringing them in from multiple angles. Tries to bring in a rush from that angle, and you see there the meatball is just out for so long that he's not able to actually change his camera around. Yeah, Astro just... Maneuvering between front and back makes it difficult for Hanukkah really to know where he wants to take his aim. All right, as you see right there, he's just playing Dance Dance Revolution in that one little like three by three square. That's gonna grab up, has his rush too. Ram rush is hard for anyone to avoid, especially yeah, Coil. Probably, yeah, it's not enough time. He could probably just uh, hold on. Yeah, even time. if he pops it, it's not yeah. gonna work out. Yep. And we just stand back and observe the neutral. Mm -hmm. Last game, or last round scenario for Hanukkah here. All right, let's see what he's gonna be bringing to the table. Oh, he's going to be bringing nine bolts. Three tri-blasts, nine bolts from Astro. All right, don't this, I don't think will, you know how to do math. This will break a man's spirit and his shield. Like, once he gets the arm up, nine bolts. Look at him. See, three plus three oh, yeah, you're plus right. okay. three. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Oh, but that tri-blast of Hanukkah's is going to be what catches Astro in the end there. Only gets a little over 200, but it's still damage that wasn't being applied otherwise. Justice rains down from above here. It's going to break the shield. Yeah, if there's one thing that rush does, it's break your shield. 
I like that Justice Ring from above. That's pretty funny, actually. Wow, thank you for saying that instead of laughing, Sage. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Sorry. It takes, hard. It, it takes a lot to me to make me laugh. All right, here we go, though. All right, trading out the hits. Really trying to start some aggression here, but both of these two just boxing each other out. Pretty much box rush farming at this point. I know. Point. They're just playing a game of Toho within arms. What the heck is going on? Goes for the rush right here. Monica able to retreat. Gets backpedaled and only takes the round. What was that? Like 75 in chip damage. Not yeah. a lot at all. But his shield is looking pretty low for it. All right. How does he close it out? Got 30 seconds left on the Ooh. clock about. He could go for an explosion confirm if he really wanted to. I mean, it's not like you can really say you're going for it and then yeah. get it. But if you get it, you sure as heck get rewarded for it. But he's going to need to play a little more defensively right now. It's not Hanukkah's style, and he knows it's not his style. Just going to choose his defend there. Good play. Yeah. Good play. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be very difficult, even with the rush, if he even gets, gets the pop. I don't think there's enough time for him to DPS it. Like, I think it might be Oh, over. gets his rush. Is he going to be able to do it? I think a grab actually... Uh, I don't know. No, not I don't gonna think even so. get a Wake matter. Up, tri blast. Yep. Okay, there not we go. Three matter. O for Astro. Yeah, I think Astro's pretty happy with that. I think he was expecting it. I think Hanukkah was hoping he'd place a little bit better, but it was one of those times where it's a three O in numbers, not a three O in spirit. Yeah, we'll have to see. Hanukkah's gonna have to move it back into losers, but that was a very dominant match coming from Astro there. Yeah, I think who's left? Him and Hanukkah and Twin. Yeah. Hanukkah's oh, gonna stay gonna right be, there. That's gonna be a rough match for Twin if he's able to take it over Hanukkah. Yeah. He's gonna have to like, he might have to bring out his own double tri blast. And then I will say once again, welcome to the meta. They don't can't, can't see me right now. Yeah. Dang. But yeah, Hanukkah just uh, he's gotta recollect his loss and then move on into losers finals. Dude, he's not collecting any losses right. He's just mad chilling, singing along, looking like a cow chewing its cud. <laughs> I and Twin stepping up to the plate. Let's see what the batter's gonna swing with. Alrighty, moving in okay. here. What I wanna see, I have not seen this in a long time. This was in Central SmackDown 3, I think. Twin brought a Springman out of absolutely nowhere and almost reversed 3-0 to skew with it. I really wanna see it again. I haven't seen it. I talked to him about it last tournament we were at, which is what, Sm Smash and Splash? Uh -huh. We haven't seen it then, but I want to see it again. He picked random for that, though. That was just a random pick because he thought he was going to lose. But I think maybe if he's not confident, we can see the random button again, and I hope it brings back that wonderful springy boy. <laughs> if you want to live on the spirit of Para, double toaster spring, man. That's how you yes. avenge your fallen friend. <laughs> I think Hanukkah may have gone to get water or just give himself a little bit of real. Uh, yeah, there ah, we go. Okay. He's back. All right. Twin just kind of hooking himself up there. Gonna have to find a way to get that uh, those headphones back with those uh, that massive hat. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, and you can see the Kid Cobra's hot sign in the back. No Kid Cobra's on the screen right now, though. Like no players or anything, so it's a uh, it's a sign in vain for for now. There is no, there is never a bad time to tell people about how attractive those man's muscles are. Okay. Cobra's hot. Though so are they are they muscles or are they just like snakes all coiled together? Like if so, one is hot, the other is even hotter depending on what you're into. But for me, it's a little bit of a bra moment. Bra bra moment, Kid Cobra. <laughs> Alrighty, looks like they're going ahead and get started here. Hanukkah takes a little while to set up though, but of course we are here at losers finals of Switch Fest 2019 arms today. All of ARMS is going to be finishing up today. And then tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. we'll have Aces Top 6. Uh, and I think we have Pokin. And then we'll have Smash Top 12 after that. And I think Smash is going to be coming on right after this. So if you guys are here for that Smash Brothers action, then be sure to check it out. And we also have two streams going on. We have this and the Meta Ship. So. But if you're interested in how ARMS works and how ARMS is as a competitive scene, this is a definitely a good place to showcase some of the talent that we have here that came out to California today. Oh, yeah, for sure. If you're interested, you see this, and you want to get connected to the ARMS community, a lot of good Discord servers going around, a lot of good tournaments as well. Um, speaking just tournament servers, ARMS Central, very easy to find, not going to be hard at all. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for tournaments, um, my friend Era and myself both run the Network Era series We mm -hmm. um, with uh, Champions of the Era with a slightly different back room, uh, different rule set and the uh, Temple Tantrum uh, backroom tournament. Um, we have well. uh, SoCal ARMS. That yes, SoCal. Whenever we have Wednesday Night Fight or like ARMS Fest that happen yeah. every now and then. Um, if you're in the Midwest area, St. Louis holds their own locals um, that happen, I think, every Thursday, if I remember off the top of I my head. I think so, yeah. Um, if you're looking in Canada, there's uh, the Chance of Flurries Monthlies that Maliv herself runs. Mm -hmm. um, and though we're going to get back into the match right now, though. Twin 5-0 versus Hanukkah Jabroni. 
And they lead off with these, uh, with trying to close out Hanukkah. Hanukkah, though, gonna choose to advance right from the start. Again, I'm not sure who chose this map. I can't, I don't want to believe it was Hanukkah because he hates this map, but he chose this map earlier. It makes me wonder if he really hates this map. Maybe he's trying to practice and be like, well, I'm gonna go on this stage eventually, so maybe just get out of the way now. But Ooh, let's see. Standing his ground right there against Twin 5 0, trying to leap in and get a freeze. Not gonna fall for it though, just stay strong. Twin does have a nasty habit of just going for the ice chains because he expects people to expect them. Ooh, good rush right there by Hanukkah. Starts with a stun, gets it with the rush. Yeah, true great combo confirmed. right there. Great confirmed there, had just enough distance to be able to pull that off. Speaking of confirms though, Twin is in a good situation to confirm a grab right there, or if he wants to, the Biffler at a close range confirms into the rush. It's not like a 50-50, it's not a mix-up. It is a guaranteed confirm that he can land at any time if he wants to. Yeah. Additionally, he can do like Biffler into grab like uh, very often, but it's a matter of how close he is and if he can get the poke in. Doesn't look like he's quite finding that yet. I think with especially the chocolate. Oh, is he gonna get it here? He does get the juggle. Almost gets uh, caught out by the stairs of DNA Lab, but is not quite knocked down by it. Held relatively even. Twin does need to get a last hit in against Hanukkah's rush, but Biffler is the arm to do it. Oh, wow! Just wow what break. happened? Did it hit the pillar? Did it splash off the pillar? No, it just went around it. Weird, because like you see it clipped right through there. That yeah. was a weird as heck. Yeah, that, that is weird. But yeah, just going to go right through it, man. All right, let's see what they're going to be bringing to the table here. Twin going to stick with the same set. Hanukkah probably going to stick with the same set. He won. Makes sense. Yep. Ooh, Twin actually playing a lot more patient that time. And Hanukkah as well, not going for the aggression right off the bat. He's going to stay back a little bit further. But now he's waiting. He's a little like Astro, honestly. He might have osmosis that in. Mm -hmm. he's, he's staying back further. Now he's playing a lot more like a traditional campy Twin Tell. All right, got him. Ooh, that's going to be a rush yeah, confirm. Another stun. Stun into confirm. That's a lot of damage already. Well, let's see what he's going to be able to do up. Tries to go for a coverage of the. Uh, non tri -blast directional dash with the Chakra. Not able to land it, and Twin is gonna lead it to a sequence that punishes him for that for 335 damage with his rush. And oh. a grab to counter Yeah, goes right into it. I was staring at Hanukkah's side of the screen and it just came out of nowhere. I don't think he was expecting that at all. Hanukkah trying to advance once again, using some shield techniques that it looks like he learned from Steelhead. Oh, there we it's go, another right Chakra. Trying to control the space with the arms he has. Oh, Goes good chakra right there. Time. In grab. Gets another grab. Hanukkah's going to get rush out of just a little dash sequence if he's careful with it. Twin needs to make a play happen soon. He's, oh, gets the Biffler. Not able to confirm off the end. Hanukkah staying strong right there. Doesn't want to burst the rush if he doesn't have eyes on his opponent. Oh, no. Oh, wow, that explosion was enough. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It was, the, it was all 130 damage to him. Yeah. Just down to his last, like, half of a bar. All right, Hanukkah clutching out that game there. All right, this is I want this is best of five, correct? Yes, it is. All right, perfect. Whoo, man, that was pretty intense. You can see Twin's face; it kind of looks a little bit annoyed right uh, now. But no, honestly, this is good for Twin. Twin has three levels of being activated. Okay, he's got his base form, which is where he's like happy, jovial, you know, normal Twin stuff. His second level is when his draw his jaw drops to the floor like that thing. He he he's not a kid Cobra player, but that thing on a hinge is like a snake. <laughs> And then third level, <clears throat> excuse me, it's when he looks absolutely dead in the eyes. That is when you know Twin is completely on top of his game. If he's smiling, you should be worried for Twin. If he's happy, you should th think uh, you should pray for this man. But if he looks like he doesn't want to be here and he wants his opponent in the ground, that's when you know Twin's ready. Yeah, we'll have to see though. Sometimes murder is the best strategy. <laughs> you can quote me on that. Clip me on that. I don't care. All right, let's see you. Via what are they going to go to? Via. Interesting. This would have been. Why is everyone picking these stages that I don't understand for them? He's got probably got cluster set. He's probably got cluster set. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's switching them up. Yeah, he's picking them right now. He's got the nade, tribolt, uh, or triblast, excuse me. And Glusher. Glusher set. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not surprised. It's it's twin on Via. That's what you expect. All right. Same set by Hanukkah, it looks like. Unless he changed that glove. I think he had a chill on before, though. Yeah. And Twin, gonna be, you've seen this here today already. We saw against Para how potent this set is at purging the, uh, the stuff that tries to stop arms. Deflect, nah, nothing. Actress Aura, nah, nothing. But Hanukkah is saying, Twin 5 0, nah, nothing. Trying to go in for another confirm. Catches him on the jump, though. What's the control gonna be? Goes for the grab. Decides to lose a little bit to try and gain some momentum. Not Ooh. quite. Ooh. Gets a good hit out of the air. Twin knocked down and back. Now forced into the corner he had Hanukkah in before. 
Gonna have to roll into the corner to stay safe. That wall is an even worse position than the one he's in now. Max off, but there's like no good spots on Mia, man. There's absolutely nowhere you are safe. You're not even safe from that rush when you get knocked to the side. And that's just a clean hit by uh, Tonica. Very yeah, clean round. Very, very confident. It was a great start on it. Alrighty, moving on. Man, double nade. What does Twin 5 even do about that? That was such a just great control of the match and the stage in general. Uh, he brings Hanukkah to the meta. That's what he does. Double nade Lola going to be brought out right now. Very good set at boxing. I mean, we saw with Astro how much Hanukkah can struggle against it. The rush actually does land after a slight correction, Wang. 290 damage right there. And that's arms. Good hit right there, getting a 170 juggle sequence. Hanukkah backed up into the corner. No real places to go. Nade is so fast and so curvable that even if he tries to react to what Twin uh, is doing, he can just kind of throw that boy around by wiggling the stick, and it's almost a guaranteed hit. Yeah. Ooh, another knockdown. Hanukkah with such good control right now, and he's got rush available too. Will he try and keep it in the corner? The arms are charged with Ooh, the explosion, but clip. knocks it out. Yeah. Oh, you gonna go for the rush right there? Very smart play. No way Twin could have got out of that with the way he was trying to go. Yeah. 290 damage, one grab. Twin, oh, his shield's looking a little low, looking a little bit toasty. Yeah. He's got his rush up. Hanukkah is in the kill percent right now. If he's able to land it, goes for it. Hanukkah, though, able to dash just to the right, not even flinching for a second. No hesitation, no breathing. He doesn't give a crap if Ooh. he loses this round breathing, but Twin 5-0 able to get the grab. Man, just the knockdown. That was crazy. Twin 5-0 looked like he was going to be down and out, but he got out of that situation. He made the most out of it. All righty, final round here for game two. God, nobody called Twin 5-0 a one-trick pony. <laughs> Please, nobody ever say that this man does not know how to adapt. Going from a very zone-heavy style to a very aggressive finish right there. Channeling our lord and savior, the aggressive uh, Lola Poppy Jr. Hanukkah How just sitting in the shield. Oh my god. That was, oh my gosh, that was a neutral exchange, everyone. Yeah, that this. leads to Hanukkah's rush being depleted and Twins rush coming out. That's not gonna break. That will do quite a significant amount of chip. And it is gonna lead to Hanukkah getting knocked back into this corner with nowhere to go. Alrighty, decides to try and close in the gap. Very close quarter combat right now. Tries to close in even more. Oh, Ooh, man, that he's having arms. a hard time getting around the explosions. Ooh, I think he's aiming for the arms right now. That's a good play right there. If he's aiming for Hanukkah's arms, oh, the explosion. Actually, he didn't want that to go off. That could have gotten even more off of that if yeah. Hanukkah hadn't gotten clipped. Ooh, but another explosion. Hanukkah now starting off with some aggression. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, and there's you can tell both aggression. of these players respect each other so much because of the way they wait in front of each other when their arms are charged. Ooh, good hit right there. Let's see if we're going to go back into a patient exchange. Hanukkah knows that's such an, a, that's such an important thing to do against Twin Tail is challenge her Actresaur with grabs. But if they're at the right distance and the right range and they know what's coming, they can do something to counteract it. Yeah. And that is going to be Hanukkah going up two now. This could be his first bracket victory over Twin, I think. Is it? I think so. And the list that potentially beats Twin 5-0 grows who knocked twin, more. Who knocked Twin down into losers? Uh... Oh, it was oh, Hanukkah. Hanukkah. It was yeah, Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, never mind. Never mind. I'm stupid. Maybe I'm first dumb. time he'll double eliminate him? Yeah, I mean, th this is the second time they fought in bracket. Okay. So, at least the offlines. In onlines, I think they might have played back in the old days. Man, that was quick. They went right into it. Buster Beach is going to be our next set here. All right, let's see. Twins sticking with the Galusher set, not changing back despite the change in stage. Yeah. This does capitalize on the Hot Pockets very well. <laughs> it, does, it does make sure that the Hot Pocket stays nice and toasty. Oh man, try to go for an immediate grab. Not quite going to find anything though. Twin trying to take to the air right now. Is a smart strategy with Twin Tail's uh, very aerial capabilities. And the fact that Hanukkah has played a little bit more ground based the last couple of games. Uh -huh. It will allow him to get those tribals, the tribalist bolts, excuse me, in from the air to strike the ground in front of him, causing a splash damage. Yes. Yeah. Monica trying to set up something. Twin able to dodge out of the way of most of them, but the one-two against the border is what's going to do him in a knockdown. Right. So nice 110, nothing big coming out of it. Just a little bit of a reset. Oh, but that could be big. Down. Yeah. All right, tries to go to the side of the border. Make sure that Hanukkah doesn't have anywhere to try to run and use a chakra rush at. Yeah. It's very interesting to see him keeping the tri blast blush set on this kind of stage too. Usually he'll default back into like a Biffler Ice Dragon, but really trying to see because it looked like that was the closest he's gotten so far with that aggressive type of playstyle, and it looked like it's working out so far. Yeah. The thing he does have over the other set is the horizontal recovery. While you do have vertical recovery with the Ice Dragon Biffler, it's not what he needs against Hanukkah right now. Yeah. And he's recognized that, making sure that this set is what he needs, and it'll be worked out. 
Yeah, trying to go in. Alrighty. Still throwing out those charm shards. Trying to catch Ooh, it. So good hit. Okay, gets the blast. And there's oh, right through. Wow. Flusher almost gets over, but the Chakra catches him right in time and starts the arm retracting. This rush could kill from Hanukkah. That's the, oh, it doesn't get canceled. Oh, but it allows Hanukkah to get out of the way. Tries to go for the Name grab, but it's not going to be a landing. Oh, man. And all of a sudden, Hanukkah, if he gets the one rush, oh, catches him in the air. Is that Why? enough? Twin. That's enough. That's that enough. is enough. Three, two, one, yeah, and you're time. done. Oh, almost got to grab it. Almost bounced off to the side. At least, at least Hanukkah didn't leave his guard down at the very end. That would have been yeah. tragic. But he's going to close it out just barely with that last minute rush. All right. Twin going to need to make some changes. It seems like in the neutral, he's doing fine. But the second that Hanukkah gets his rush, he shuts down. He needs to make sure that he can keep his presence up. Sometimes it's better to take the rush than to fear it constantly. Yeah. Ooh, and the paralysis decides to go back onto the ground. Ooh, good hit right there. Twin using the poison damage. The frame stutter is a bad thing for Twin Tail to deal with. And uh, looks like uh, Twin is happy to stay on this little ramp area. Keeping uh, Hanukkah nailed down to this ramp is very important. Alrighty. How does he close in the gap? Decides to move in. The pressure. How did he close in the gap? He just decides to just walk there. Yeah. He just walks 500 miles and then he walks 500 more. Hanukkah can taste that grand finals moment right here, right now. So he's playing absolutely carefully to try and make his way in. Does not want to take any unnecessary risks right now. Close the gap again. Ooh, good back pedal right there. Both of them were playing at max distance Ooh. for quite a while, but now Hanukkah has found his time to shine. He's going to fly now. And he's going to get grabbed now, sending him flying. Quinn is going to charge up some rush, hopefully for him. Trying to move his way back around. He still has the rush available. That's something that Twins got to be careful about. Oh, close oh, it again. Oh, and he's no. going to take Almost him out with gets it. it. Is that going to kill? No, if he finished with the Tri Blast, it definitely would have. But the Chakra might be a godsend for Twin. He needs to make sure when he drops his shield that the Tri Blast isn't there to meet him. Goes for the rush. It that is break? not going to land. It's not going to break, but it's very close. A stray explosion could break it. That is going to let him get a Tri Blast bolt up. Hanukkah is close to his rush, but not close enough. It's going to come out. Instead, the Tri Blast is going to come out and take it for Hanukkah. The 80 damage knocking Twin out of bracket at third. Yeah, Hanukkah pops up. Well, it's not really a pop pop, pop out if he like stays in his chair. It's so like a pop, pop up. Pop up, yeah. <laughs> and someone, like, yes! someone installed ad block on this man. Jeez. <laughs> man, <sighs> very, very nice stuff from Hanukkah. Moving on into grand finals. Great stuff. All right, that is going to be the, we're going to have to get a bracket reset here if Monica wants to take his revenge on Astro. But he got close before. Yeah. He did definitely get a lot closer than I think. It so. was a 3-0, but it was very close, all things are going, yeah. all things considered. I think he still put up a fight, but we'll have to see. Because Astro has been looking like he's very calm, collected. Doesn't really, not really playing too emotionally today. So. Oh, when does that man ever emote besides when he decides to give you a little jig? That's about the only time he ever shows anything goofy, anything silly, anything other than stone-cold explosives. Yeah. So we'll have to see, but here we go. They're starting off yeah. with the band, so let's see. Uh, Hanukkah's got him. Looks like they're getting right back into it, Bob. Yeah. It looks like stage bands. Is he going to accept the sparring ring? Is he going to make the – is he going to actually make the power play? Well, let's see. He's still got to set things up. All right, now they got to get the room set up. Yeah, but I hope you guys are enjoying Switch Fest 2019 so far. We are here in Grand Finals of ARMS, the last possible, well, actually, there's a reset, but like the last overall set between yeah. these two opponents. We're going to see who takes home part of the $500 prize pool that we have today. Yeah, I hope you guys, if you haven't seen ARMS before, I hope this shows you guys, like, how extremely hype it can be at the high level. Mm -hmm. This shows you that, like, there is not a single second that doesn't matter in this game. The yeah. clock is 99, all 99 are required to make mm -hmm. your play happen. Yeah, I think that even though, technically speaking, the game is very simple, I think a lot of it happens uh, in the psychological type yeah. of play. You oh, know, yeah. You have so many different play styles, and yet it's like actual boxing. You're not, it's just punching, you know? Right. But the psychological play, the baits, the way you try to weave something out, the way you try to make your opponent pull out a habit that they've been doing based on their movement. That's really like how our arms is as a game, I oh, feel. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how a lot of traditional fighters play as too. Like there there are definitely not as few similarities as people would think there is looking yeah. at it. If you think of that, you look, what's this 3D arena fighter? What do I do? I just like move, I'm like Little Mac, but stupid. <laughs> um, but no, you have a lot of the same things you have to do in normal fighting games. You have to think about how you're gonna capitalize on your opponent. The only thing that's really different is you have to curve your stuff around. Yeah. 
And even then, like that's, it comes naturally. The game, I think one of the things I love about the game the most is how natural it is to learn to play. Mm -hmm. Because you see this, you pick up the controller, you have no idea what you're doing at first. Within a couple of matches, you can get down so many of the basics. Yeah. All right, we're starting on Buster Beach, so we're not gonna be going on a uh, sparring ring. Hanukkah not making the power play All right, here. let's go to the beach, beach, let's go get away. Looks like the explosion set is coming out from Astro again. Hanukkah with a slightly different set. I think I saw a popper and a slap there. But instead, we're going to start with quad nades. Quad nade, man. All right. Was anyone expecting a grand finals other than this? Kind of hoping for it, but I can't <laughs> say I wasn't expecting it. Yep. All right. We're starting off with a Michael Bay movie here. The explosions are going to be here for days. All right. Let's see what which of these two is going to start the early advantage. Looks like this time Astro was the one having to come to Hanukkah. Hanukkah is staying just on his ground right now, not wanting to move off of his little sand lot. Astro's gonna go for his rush right here. However, the explosion from the nade that Hanukkah threw out is gonna make him stay back for just a little bit longer and allow Hanukkah to get his shield up. There we go, there's the knockdown. Hanukkah still has rush available though, so he can definitely even out the game here, take himself a lead. That's just a matter of Astro decides to let him really enter the zone because right now he's doing a great job zoning with the nade arms. Yeah, we switched the rolls back. Everything is normal now, no more Freaky Friday. Ooh, this counter rush is gonna be freaky for Hanukkah. Gonna get 310 damage in. Very explosive play right there. And another 170 to follow it up. One hit away now. One charge nade is one kill for Hanukkah. See Astro just trying to throw in arms any which way he can. Tries to get it to the side like a sneaky coil that he is. But Hanukkah is ready to just stay on his shield. That's one of the most important things you can do against nade is just stay there in shield. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow, the explosion. Yeah, planted on the that? back he wall. Like, he like got the cameraman, too, with that explosion. God, R.I.P. Jeffrey. We're going to need a new one, boys. <laughs> All right, switching over to the slap. This will help him corral Astro a little bit better. I am kind of wondering, though, curved arms do not have the best track record against Coil. They have a good theoretical uses, but whether you can actually apply that to your game is yet to be seen. Yeah, I think a big difficult thing is that, yes, it does lock onto your opponent, but as soon as the arm's out, it locks onto the last position that your opponent was at. So the way Coil can move, it makes it difficult for a slam slap a manager or a slam a manager to actually land its mark. Oh, is he going to get the explosion confirmed? No, he went for it. He really tried for it. Not able to get it, but he takes Astro back to the other hot pocket. One of the worst positions for Coil to be in. Her one weakness is being kept in place. And these two arms together can definitely do that, as we see right there. Hanukkah establishing a good Actress Aura position and is just able to shield the rush. Astro tries to use to get out of it. All right, Astro going on the offensive here. Oh, it gets knocked just with one hook. Yeah, he has to go on the offensive here. Yeah. Now he's able to retreat. Thankfully, Hanukkah did uh, leave a little gap in his defenses right there, in his offenses, I guess. And Astro is able to bring back the steel wall. Oh, not quite. All righty. Just going to be a big defense play there. The grab's going to get broken up. And what's the play for Mastro? How he's going to try to get the damage output? Because right now we got 30 seconds left on the clock. Hanukkah actually doing a very good job of keeping Astro at bay all of a sudden. Oh, and he's able to get out of the way. Twintel with the fastest and sassiest walk in the game is yeah. able to just stay back. He has only a little bit of a health advantage, and oh. it's not going to last much longer. 13 seconds on the clock. Now Hanukkah needs to go back on his offensive to make something happen. Has to catch Astro in a really bad position. Needs to get Rush. Ah! Oh! Yeah, it's over. This is going to be game yep, one going over. Yeah, man, that's so unfortunate. He had such a nice game plan, and then Astro just barely got that grab, and then all of a sudden the game plans were reversed. You saw all of a sudden Hanukkah went in for the aggression, but he kept getting knocked down for it, and that just made the lead dissipate even more. Yeah, that that uh, the, it's the swing of Nade, man. It's What's so potent about it is not just the fact that it's so fast, the fact that it's so curvable. It's the fact that because it's an explosion arm, it doesn't just knock you down just like a firearm would. It stalls you there in the air and gives you a little bit more time to get in positions. Yeah. A lot of what makes Nade good is stuff people don't think about. All right, looks like one of them is ready. Uh, I think it's Astro who's ready up. Yeah. And Hanukkah just thinking about what he's got his options here. Yeah, he, he's thinking not slap a lander again yeah. because that did not work out the way he wanted to. I think, honestly, curved arms might not work out for him. Like I was saying earlier, they have a good theoretical use, not so much a good practical one. Yeah. So I think if he wants to bring something, he's going to stay Twintel. He doesn't really have a secondary to, pur to pull out on. So what he might do is just go for some more fast gloves. Stay good, Buster. All right, let's see what we, what we do with this stage again. He All right. still has the slap amander on there. However, I think he had a chilla on instead of the roaster before. Yeah, we're going nade roaster. 
All right, yeah. Gosh, it's so hard. I never understand how people are able to play two separate gloves at the same time. You have so yeah. many timings you have to think about in your head. You're managing like two different meters at the same time. But Hanigo looks like so far he's gonna make it work. Trying to go for some patient, aggressive, aggressive zoning like we've seen Twin do and Para do earlier. All right, another knockdown. Astro with the play. Wow, those explosions everywhere the tribe flies. Oh, and more explosions rocketing towards Hanukkah in the rush. 270 damage, 20 seconds in, and Hanukkah is already down to a third of his health, and it's still declining thanks to these tri blast pokes. Yeah, he's trying to get, figure out his way out of the microwave. That hot pocket is so difficult to get around, but finally back into neutral. Astro decides to give him a little bit of breathing room, respecting the rush that may come out. Monica is looking for some way to get in here, but Astro is more content to just move around and stall than to actually go for any of plays that might risk him getting hit. Hanukkah tries to go for the rush. Astro's going to get his own out of it and a grab on the follow-up. Hanukkah was probably staying in place, fearing that rush. And it's going to come out any second now. You know Astro's not going to save it for the next round. It's not the Astro way. Right. Oh. Tries to maneuver around. Okay. Yep, the there it is. is and that's going to land. Yeah, that's one it. trigger, one rush. Astro taking it. He is now up one round. If he takes this round, one more game for Hanukkah. Yeah. Man, that's uh, that's difficult. Astro not really dancing too much, though. I think he really respects uh, Hanukkah's play at the very minimum. So we'll have to I see. Mean, he's in grand finals for a reason. There yeah. is a lot to respect here. It's just Coil is not a very respectful character. She is, in terms of, like, degeneracy, she can do a lot with yeah. it. She can do a lot of degen stuff with already degen arms. If you're looking to lose some brain cells while playing a character, Quill's the one for you. Hanukkah oh, trying to advance right around. Now. Yeah, neither of them are really playing a separate style right now. They're not playing super aggressively or super defensively. They're just kind of fishing right now, which right. for this late into their sets, I'm surprised they're still going around and fishing. Ooh, good hit right there. But Astro is going to lose the rush. He tries to dash forward, and the Tri-Blast rush is not consistent enough to let him do that. Good movement right there by Hanukkah, trying to dash around using Astro's aura cancels to let himself get out of the range of uh, Astro. Tries to go for a rush right there. Astro going to counteract, but not land anything. And he's back in the hot pocket. Good position for Hanukkah. Not so great, though, for Astro. Yeah, Astro still playing re relatively confident. I really like the attempt from Oh! Oh, wow, he actually clips him. Okay, yeah. 270 damage. I thought he was going to get rush canceled. I thought we were going to see JM Canada coming through the side here. <laughs> Astro's right. arm yeah. almost shield Hanukkah broken. Is playing really down right now. He's got to make something happen. He's got to get rushed back and try and go for another play. But another knockdown. Astro closes in. Will he go for the grab? Nope. Goes for another Doesn't one, two. To. The explosion comes in and knocks him down. 2-0 for Astro. All right. Are we going to stay on the beach for this? Are we going to have a sunny ending for Astro? Or is the clouds going to uh, come and roll over Hanukkah? Yeah. <sighs> Soon it's going to rain, but we'll see which of these reigns supreme. Any change by Hanukkah? I'm very curious. I'm very curious to see if he does anything. It looks like he's looking at the arms options again. I think he might be changing something, but I'm not sure. Okay, same character looks like. I'd love to see. I know I keep saying this. Someone bring out a deflect character. Please, someone anti de someone deflect this man. The deflects are great against Coil. I will preach that till the end of time. The deflects are the way you take down that girl. What are they brewing out here? Still on the beach. Alrighty. Man. Buster Beach three times in a row. Hanukkah being very stubborn right now. All right, let's see. Hanukkah switching back off of that Mander and the uh, Roaster over to the uh, Tri Blast and the Chakram. This is Hanukkah's last ditch effort. Let's see what Astro is able to bring to the table. Looks like he's still just sticking with a Nade and Tri Blast. Hasn't really changed up his set at all since the uh, Spit match just began today. Uh huh. Oh, wow, the flurry of arms making him very difficult. Wow, that camera really making Hanukkah difficult to really see what's going on. God, the spawn position was so bad for Hanukkah. He started in the back wall. He's against the wall again. 120 damage plus a bunch of chip. Hanukkah now down to a quarter of his health. Is about to get his first rush. Yeah, already. Hanukkah res or Astro respecting Hanukkah's aggressive wake up options. Ooh! But then repositions them back, and all of a sudden, yeah, we're looking at it's pretty much a near perfect. Like, only one hit has really landed onto Astro so far. One more hit, that's gonna be the round, and potentially Astro going into match point here. Oh! oh the grab. There's the grab he's been going for the entire game! Finally, he's able to land that overhead grab on Twin Tell! Man, that. that sucks. Para, are you watching? Your trick has finally been utilized. Alrighty. I'm gonna call it right now. I don't know if Hanukkah has enough juice in the tank left. 
really closes out. I want to believe, but... Look, look, he's got the Gamer Juice in the rush. He could pull this back. Astro is unfortunately charging up his Mountain Dew with every second. Oh, and he's got it right away. Coil is the rush character. Yeah. In top of everything she already has, did she need to be able to retreat from that when it should have been an obvious cancel? Yeah. Man, it's just the, the amount of rush that Coil can get. I think it just outmaneuvers so many characters. Right, it almost invalidates Twintel in some ways. The only tool she really has is act like landing Actress Aura. And even then, that can be exploited by explosive arms. Right. Oh. Ooh, oh, yeah, good Another knockdown, right though. Hanukkah saying, okay, hold on a second, commentators. We still got a little bit of fight left in us. Ooh. Oh, good hit right there. Hanaka is keeping him pinned to the hot pocket. Quarter of his health remaining. He needs to get a chakra up. What Hanukkah needs to do is go for a grab on Astro's wake up. He has not gone for that a single time yet. I think he just doesn't feel confident. I mean, he's got the rush available too. So if he makes that mistake, then it's over. I think that is pretty much going to be. Uh, he can match. survive. He can survive this rush if he gets hit. He's not even going to get hit. He chooses okay. not to. He chooses to just simply walk out of the way and not get hit. Good choice right there. I respect that decision to live. Alrighty, he's trying to close in the gap. He's got a very slight lead here. He's got the rush available too. Can he close out this match? Try and bring in a last light of hope here. Oh, oh that rush does not get it. Landed against uh, Astro Ninja. The right only now. way he's been able to advance so far is his instant counter forwards. That might break his shield. That's it. That's it. Yep, That's it. that is the set. Astro gonna get the shield break against Hanukkah with the multitude of explosive arms and is going to be your winner of Switchfest 2019. All right, Astro. The victory pop-off, and the ARMS players do not look very excited at we all. But <laughs> Did you see? He's still got his gamer inhibitor on, too. Yeah. He's still got his restraints on. This man wasn't even going 100% of his full power. <laughs> Jeez, I'm Astro. But once very again, nice. Astro, got to continue. Oh, it does fit on the headphones. Oh, my gosh. It does fit nicer than I thought. How big is your head, then? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> How big is your head if it doesn't fit on you very well with headphones? <laughs> Alrighty, congrats to our ARMS top six for the day, of course. We got first place. We have Astro Ninja. Man, fairly, I don't think, I don't know if he's even dropped any games. Like, I'd have to look at the bracket. I think him and Hanukkah went like 2-1 in their pool set. Okay. Not 100% sure, but they are impressive stuff by Astro. There is a reason he has dominated every 2GG event. He always ends up walking away with a victory. And once again, he's going to stay true. Yeah. Very nice stuff. We got the ceremony going on behind us as well. Let's go Astro! Yay, Astro! Oh, he's taking a picture. He's taking a picture. He looks evil. He looks like he's evil. cupping some kind of ball that he doesn't have. This is it's the power. Alrighty, very nice stuff. Yeah, Astro going to be closing out another victory here at Switch Fest 2019. Very nice Will stuff. anyone stop this man offline? I don't know. Will anyone ever be able to take this I man? I just don't know, man. I think every tournament he's been to offline, he's won. I don't because he wasn't at Smash Out. He was not at Smash and Splash. Mm. So the only the uh, the ones he hasn't been to are the only ones he didn't win. Yeah. Think about that. That is technically undefeated. I think. Yeah. He's got a hundred percent win rate as far as I've as far yeah. as I'm concerned. He doesn't enter a lot compared to yeah. maybe say other players, but he still has a very high win right. rate. The last time I saw him lose an offline was when he got fifth at SNS4. Yeah, that's, that was that's the, a year ago. Yeah, that was a year and some change. Yeah. Which is a lot of time for someone to level up. That was time for a skew to become a mid-level player to a dominant force. Mm -hmm. So think about how someone who was already fifth levels up in that time. Yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed Switch from 2019 ARMS. It's been a pleasure commentating. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, I am Sedge. This is my Twitter down below. Uh, I am Hama. My Twitter is down there probably too. I can't see the screen. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. But we're going to get back into some more Smash action right here, right now. But don't go anywhere. We're going to take a short break. But stick around. We'll be right back. See ya.
Welcome back to Switchfest 2019, everybody. My name is Orchestra, I am joined by Korean, and we are here bringing you Wave D of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Action. Yes, it is. The fight still goes on, yeah. right? Yeah. Everyone uh, is fighting hard out here in SoCal. We had some SoCal upsets. Oh right? my god, yes. SoCal, yeah. you know, SoCal man. I so see you guys, I see you guys. SoCal unranked, you know it was a meme, but now our hitters <laughs> are coming out of the woodwork, man. Nito yeah. popping yeah. off today. SoCal's grinding, man. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm so I don't have to tweet long my own region again. Bro, my, <laughs> my boy Rockstar Ace, he beat Hikaru with We Fit trainers. Yo, uh, yeah, bring it in for SoCal, bro. Let's, bring, go, let's go SoCal, bring, let's go. Let's go SoCal. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, uh, bring now coming into Wave D, we're going to see some more uh, talent coming up yeah. on the chopping block, of course. This is an A-tier event. It was yeah. so close. Like, we were, like, maybe two top 20 players off from getting S-tier. Really? Yeah, we were very, very, very close. Dang. But a very high-ranking A-tier yeah. uh, being Switch Fest. So I'm super excited. Of course, you guys at home are the reasons why... Uh, Team Japan's out here. Um, yeah. You guys funded them via the Convenium, so thank you very much. And thank you for 